Hi, my name is Kim. I'm an outdoor photographer based in Scotland. I mostly do landscape photography, but occasionally I dabble in abstract, macro, wildlife and astrophotography too. I often shoot the northern lights in the winter months, but other than that, I don't know very much about astrophotography. With the help of some other photographers, I am learning more about this genre of photography though, and sharing my experience as I do so. Up until now, I've been pretty happy with the shots I've captured, but there is a few things that I want to get better at. One thing that's always frustrated me a little bit though when it comes to my astro images is the amount of grain that's present in my photographs. Over the years, upgrading my camera and lenses has helped with this massively, as has using the noise reduction tool in Lightroom. But even with doing all these things, there's still a little bit too much noise in my images for my liking. However, the other night when I was out with Andrew, he gave me a tip of how I can further reduce the noise within my images. So tonight I'm heading out to try out that tip and see if it works. me set up and ready for my first shot of the evening but before I take this shot and show you this technique you may notice that my videoing is much better tonight than it was in the last video and that's because as you may remember one thing I learned was that having a really wide open aperture as wide as you can make it is the best way to let as much of that star light into your camera so when I went home I had a look at my lens collection and on the evening the widest open aperture I had in my lenses was f 2.8 but when I got home I found my 50mm prime lens which goes down to f1.8 and just that extra stop or so is allowing so much more light to come into the camera and you can see the Orion above me right now which is just incredible. It's not quite as amazing as Andrew's f1.4 lens but a massive improvement on my filming from the other night I'm sure you'll agree. So without further ado I'm going to take some images now of, of my first composition of the evening and then talk you through this technique that I learnt. I'm trying out at the famous Slane's Castle, also known as Dracula Castle, because it was meant to have inspired Bram Stoker's Count Dracula novel in Aberdeenshire. Uh, but rather than going up to the castle itself to begin with, I've just come slightly down the track and I'm trying to photograph the silhouette of the castle in the distance with the Orion above it. And what I'm doing with this technique is quite simple. I'm taking three images, one after the other. I'm taking them at 10 second exposures. My aperture's wide open at f3.2 and my ISO is at 1600 and that's allowing me to let enough light into the camera to take images reasonably quickly. I could decrease my shutter speed a little bit more but I'm going to keep it at 10 seconds. But the trick I was learnt the other night is to take multiple exposures of the sky. So in this case I'm taking three images and then when I get home if I stack them on top of each other in certain software that will massively decrease the amount of noise that's in my images. So when I get home I will do that. I'll sit on the computer and I'll show you at the end of this video whether it works or not. But for now I'm just going to take these images as they are without stacking them and then I'll show you at the end of the video how stacking them if it makes a difference or not. Which I'm pretty certain it's going to. down the track and as we're coming around the corner 
I've come up onto this little ledge here and it's given me a slightly different vantage point of the castle and Orion is now further over the top of the castle and the main part of the castle with all the sort of turrety areas and, and spiral staircases that are still left within it and it's really allowing for a really nice image here we've got again Orion right above it but a different angle rather than being off to the, the left and it's just given a slightly different feel so again I'm going to take a number of images here I'll show you one on its own now and at the end of the video I'll show you three of them stacked on top of each other to again see if it decreases that noise <laughs> shot I've come down now to the front of the castle really close to it and we've got this beautiful view here of the castle and again the Orion is just uh, to the right of, of the castle here one thing I wanted to do here was to try and illuminate the castle a little bit more with my torch but when I put on the light there's an awful kind of haze down here tonight I don't know if it's been caused by all the sea spray or just the changing in weather but when I took a shot it was just so hazy it didn't work so again I'm doing the same technique of taking the three images I'll show you one in a second without stacking it and then the stacked one at the end of the video and um, but yeah another nice shot of the castle with the Rhine above it really really beautiful and one thing I didn't mention tonight is the moon is out and we've got a half moon at the moment so there's quite a lot of light actually here tonight we don't really need our torches when we're walking around which is in itself illuminating the castle because it's over here Hey, which is really really nice illuminating the side so I didn't really need my torch it was just going to be an added extra and an added bonus there but uh, yeah another beautiful shot here and uh, yeah I'll share it with you now goodness this last image is going to be incredible so what I've done now is I've come round to the front of the castle you can see it here behind me you've got the Dracula spikes and everything and all the old windows looking out right over the sea's edge and not only is this castle good for photographing the Orion at this time of year but right now we've got the plough right above it there as well so two of the most famous constellations in the night sky I've been able to capture tonight at this location which is just incredible so coming round here is amazing and what I'm doing again is exactly the same technique but I've also taken a few selfies of me here as well and I think this is definitely going to be the winning image of the night I just think this absolutely blows my mind the famous Slane's castle with the plough above it I mean it doesn't get much better than that few days later and I'm back in the office and it's time to see whether that technique of stacking my images has worked to reduce noise. So one software that was recommended to me to stack these images was a software called Sequitor. Now I went to download this and then I realised that it's only available on Windows which is a real shame because this software is free, it's easy to use, it does everything for you and a lot of astrophotographers use it but 
I'm a Mac girl at the moment, so I couldn't use that. So I went online and did a bit of Googling to try and find whether there was another one that was uh, made for Mac that I could download instead. And I came across one called Starry Landscape Stacker, which had really good reviews. Unfortunately, you do have to pay for this one, but it's not that expensive. I think I paid £31.99 pence for it. And you know, providing I use it regularly, that's not much at all. So. I downloaded it. It works the same way as a sequitur. You import all the images within a sequence that you've taken and the software um, stacks them all for you and then you're you're left with, with, with your final image at the end which you then import into your editing software and, and edit from. So that's what I did and I've got to say I, I'm really impressed with the results. Not just from a noise perspective but actually I found that when I stacked the images that my images became much clearer and the colour definition within the photographs was so much more vibrant. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you every image that you've seen in this video already um, side by side with the non-stacked versions, so the single exposure and then the stacked version which has got three images stacked on top of each other so that you can see the difference that it creates. with three images and they say the more photographs you do in a sequence and stack together the better your images will be you know the more sharper they'll be the more definition they'll be within the images so the fact that I saw that difference with just three images makes me really excited to try this with even more images in the future so it works which is really really great so yeah it's a great tip there you know if you've got the time and the energy and you want to get better much more sharper astral photographs with less grain and more definition Stacking your images is a great way to go and getting one of these softwares that do it for you makes things so much easier. You can do it on Photoshop but it can be quite time consuming so getting one that does it for you just makes the whole process much quicker. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.